So one day, um, Gautier was searching for the right vocalist for the song, and Francois, the producer, put my name forward. And I was, of course, overjoyed because I'm a, a big fan. He came over to my house with a microphone, and we set up in my bedroom. And, you know, we did a few takes. We talked about the emotion of the song, and that was it. And I had no real expectations for what would happen. I thought it might be a nice ballad halfway through the record or something, and things got pretty crazy. <laughs> Miami goes too. Oh, I love this song. Somebody that I used to know. Both you. And um, yeah, we were number one in 18 countries across the world and won two Grammys. Um, yeah, it's been a really incredible experience to see how much that song impacted people. Some of my first memories making music were on a cassette tape player where you'd press record and sing into the microphone and I would record my silly little songs and I'd make my younger brother like <laughs> record them with me. I remember writing songs as young as eight or nine, picked up the guitar around 12 and got a little more serious about performing live. I got really into looping when I was young and started to mimic other instruments with my voice out of necessity, but also because it sounded really cool. Um, and I've kept that up as a practice and as a tool for songwriting. I was signed to a management company at about 17. Um, they also acted like a label who were helping finance my first record. And then um, once that album got out in the world, I signed to Warner Brothers at about 21 and moved to Los Angeles. I find it really hard to describe my sound. I find it difficult to explain my music because it draws from so many different places. Um, I'd say at its core, it is soul music. And when I say soul music, I mean it's derivative of R&B genres and uh, I have a love of jazz. Um, and not that the music is jazz, but it has a mentality of jazz, which is experimentation. I also really appreciate pop, so I sometimes call my music um, alternative pop or experimental pop um, because it very much sits in the territory of catchy choruses. But I'd like to think that it's it's sitting a little left of center. I think my use of the voice is a big part of what makes the music unique. I am a very rhythmic singer, so I like to really pick interesting pockets and improvise a lot with my voice uh, to create different sounds that maybe you haven't heard necessarily from a singer. Even sounds that are sometimes ugly sounding or, you know, extremely masculine or extremely feminine, and I, I like to play with what you can achieve and what you can provoke in people using just the voice. As a kid, my music was a lot more in the field of singer-songwriter, quite folky, and I'd say reasonably safe in terms of just the chord choices and melodies. And I'd say I got pretty bored of that, and I think boredom is a really important thing in music. You know, getting bored is what pushes you to be like, ah, let me try something completely different. Yeah, around the age that I got into a lot of prog rock and metal and <laughs> interesting experimental artists, I realized, hmm, maybe I could apply some of this excitement to the kind of more pop traditional music that I make. And I think that was the start of, of me pushing the boundaries a little bit on, on what I could do, especially as a woman. I think we're told a lot to sound pretty and to kind of be in this floaty feminine world and I kind of wanted to shake that idea up a little bit and push into places that weren't um, as, as stereotypical. It's taken me time to really find my confidence as a woman in this industry. Um, there are so many of us that obviously aspire to have technical roles and um, work in this field, but there aren't as many opportunities for us. Um, that's changing and it's getting so much better, but I just wish that um, 
someone had told me when I walked into those, those studios when I was young that I could hold my own just like the men and I could talk the same language and be able to work at the same level and work just as fast, if not faster. I'm known for being extremely fast on Pro Tools these days and, you know, it's okay to claim that and to be strong about your thoughts and um, bold about the things that you, that you want in your music. These days, uh, I think I have a lot more confidence in my own instincts and I doubt myself less. And a lot of that is because I've equipped myself with vocabulary and also, you know, I, I really believe in working hard and, and showing your craft for people to see, gaining respect that way by being really masterful at what you do and um, being a nice person at the same time. <laughs> it is possible to do both. <laughs> I'm really passionate about the use of the voice just because I do believe that it's an instrument that can do so much and uh, your production can change a lot when you recognize the power of that instrument and also the power of your body to inform um, the sounds that you make. I think this course is gonna be important for people because we need to see ourselves mirrored back in each other. We need to hear things that make us feel seen and known and making music can be really hard sometimes and it can be really stressful and there can be a lot of self-doubt and sometimes all you need is for someone to give you a little advice, a little encouragement or help you to see something in a way that you hadn't seen it before. So I really believe that this course can help people gain a new perspective, perhaps gain a deeper understanding of what they're already equipped with, and inspire them to go further than they've been going with their music, with their production, and with their ambition as an artist. <laughs>